Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's try a circuit that has two capacitors in it. So we'll have to work that one a little bit differently. So here's our circuit. We have a voltage supply that provides 20 volts at time equals zero. Two resistors of one ohm each, a capacitor of a half a farad, a capacitor of a third farad. And notice we're trying to find the voltage across resistor two as a function of time. To help us out, we got this node right here. We'll call that V1 at that node and V2 over here. That's not really a node, but we can take advantage of that and notice that VO, the output voltage, is equal to the difference between V1 and V2. So that will come in handy as well. So how do we attack a problem like this? Well, let's take the advantage of these two nodes and set up an equation where we have the currents getting into the node equal to the currents coming out of the node. So we'll call that KCL1 and KCL2. So on the first node, the current coming in is I, and the current leaving it's I1 over here and I2 going this way. So that would be I1 plus I2. Over here, notice we have the current coming in as I2 and the current leaving is I2. Now, you may say, well, that's kind of crazy. How do you make an equation out of that? But we can because we can de define I1 as the, the current coming through the resistor. I mean, I2 as the current coming through this resistor and I2 as the current going through the capacitor. So it does give us the additional information. So let's come up with the equations. The first one is I will be equal to the voltage difference divided by the resistance. So in this case, I would be 20 minus V1 divided by the resistance, which is one. Notice we kept the numbers pretty simple. All right, I1 is the current across the capacitor going down. So that would be C1 times the DV1 DT. In other words, the derivative of the voltage across the capacitor with respect to time. And then here I2 would be equal to the voltage across this resistor, which would be V1 minus V2 divided by the resistance. So there's our first equation. Our second equation, notice that, well, actually this is not I1, this is I2, because it's I2 going in and I2 leaving. So here we again have V1 minus V2 divided by the resistor equals, in that case, the current going through the capacitor, which is uh, C2, times dv2 with respect to time. Cleaning up those equations a little bit so they look a little simpler, we get 20 minus v1 is equal to c1, which is a half, times the derivative with respect to time, the derivative voltage, plus v1 minus v2. And over here, this becomes v1 minus v2 equals c2, which is one third, times the derivative with respect to time. So now we need uh, a strategy. The strategy would be to get two equations. The first equation where we get the voltage one with respect to time and then voltage two with respect to time and simply subtract the two from one another. So looking at this equation right here, I have a V2 and a derivative of V2 with respect to time. If I can somehow substitute for these two in terms of V1, then I have an equation with just V1. I could perhaps use this equation right here. Let's solve this one for V2. So bring that across over here. We have V2 on the left is equal to, I can bring the V1 across here to here. That gives me 2V1 minus 20. And then we still have the plus 1 half DV1 DT. So this gives me an equation that gives me V2 in terms of V1. And that can be substituted in here. Now if I take the derivative of that, so I have dv2 dt, which is equal to 2 dv1 dt, the derivative that goes to zero, and here I get plus one half times the second derivative of v1 with respect to time. And notice I now have an equation that gives me the first derivative of the v2 with respect to time, which can be substituted in here. And now I have a complete equation, well not yet, after I do it, after I make the substitutions, I will have a complete equation with, with only V1 in the equation. So let's do that. So in this case, we have V1 minus V2, which is this right here. <clears throat> so that is minus 2V1 minus a minus 20 and minus this. is 
equal to one third the second derivative. So that would be one third of this, which is one third of this, that's just two thirds times the first derivative with respect to time, and one third times this, that would be one sixth the second derivative with respect to time. All right, so notice now I have a complete equation with only v1 in it. That's what I was trying to accomplish. Of course, we want to clean that one up a little bit. So we need the constant on one side. So we have 20 is equal to, we have a negative v1 on the left, bring it to the right, and becomes a positive v1. Then we have a half a dv dt, to the, that's a minus, bring it to the right, that becomes a plus. So we end up with plus one half plus two thirds times the first derivative with respect to time. And then here we have plus one sixth, the second derivative of v1 with respect to time. Okay, so now of course I need to combine these two. The common denominator is six, that would be four six plus three six, which is seven six. So here we get 20 is equal to v1 plus seven six times the first derivative plus one sixth times the second derivative. Like that. And then of course you want to multiply everything by 6, get rid of those fractions, and rearrange the terms. So here we end up with 120 is equal to, let's write the second order term first. Then here that would be plus 7 dv1 dt, and that would be times 6, that would be plus 6 v1. And so there we have our nice differential equation, second order differential equation. Of course, if you want to get the transient solution first, we want to set this equal to zero, get the characteristic equation. So to find the transient form of the equation first. Okay, what we can do here is set that equal to zero. So we get zero is equal to s squared plus seven s plus six. And notice that in this case, if we square this and four times this, we notice that in this case, alpha is larger than omega sub naught. So solving that, we get minus 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared, it would be 49, minus 4 times 6, so 4 times a times c, that would be 24, all divided by 2a, which is 2. And so that would be s1 and s2 is equal to that. And solving for that, so that's equal to minus 3.5 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 24, that's 25, that would be 5, divided by 2, it would be 2.5. And uh, sure enough, so we have alpha squared and omega sub naught squared, so you can clearly see that, uh, well, if you take the 2 and divide in there, but as long as this number is bigger than that, we have alpha greater than omega sub naught, so we're in a case where we have overdamping. So this means we have an overdamped case. All right, so the two solutions are when we add these together, we get negative 1, or when we subtract, we get negative 6. All right, so those are the two solution, solutions for S1 and S2. So now we want to write the general equation for that. So the general equation for that will look as follows. We can say that v1 as a function of time is equal to a times e to the minus t plus b e to the minus 6t and of course that would be the transient solution of the equation now if we want to need if we want the total solution we also want plus voltage steady state then what is that voltage steady state equal to all right so steady state voltage and we're looking at v1 so if this is going for a long time, the capacitors will fill up with charge. So no current will flow through here. The current will simply stop. That means that there's no voltage drop across R1. There's no voltage drop across R2, which means that V1 will be equal to V2, and that will be equal to the source voltage. So that means that the steady state voltage is equal to 20. And so now we can write that V1 as a function of time is equal to a e to the minus t plus b e to the minus 60 
plus 20 volts at steady state. Now we need to find A and B. So what is V1 when time is equal to 0 equal to? When, well, when it's prior to 0, there's no voltage across the source, meaning there's no voltage across here, no voltage across there. As soon as the switch is, the switch is flipped, so to speak, and voltage is a, we have voltage across the power supply, at that very moment, we don't have voltage yet across R1. We don't have voltage yet across R2. So we know that that has to be equal to zero. And that means that if T is equal to zero, this becomes one, that becomes one. So we have A plus B plus 20 equals zero. That's our first equation. So we can essentially write as minus 20 is equal to A plus B. So we don't have enough information yet to find either a or B, which means we now need to take the first derivative of that equation and set time equal to zero again. So let's do that. So from here we're going to get the first derivative that gives us dv1 dt is equal to minus a e to the minus t minus 6b e to the minus 6t and of course the derivative of that becomes zero. Now what is the derivative of the voltage of, uh, of V1 with respect to time when time is equal to zero. All right, how do we figure that out? Well, that has something to do with this right here. How about I1? I1 is equal to C1, which is one half, times dV1 dt, which means that dV1 dt is equal to i divided by one half. So i divided by one half. Like this, i1. Now, what is i1 equal to when time is equal to zero? So the question is, what is dv1 when time equal to zero with respect to time? Well, that's going to be i0 divided by one half. So what is the current at that very moment when time is equal to zero? Well, notice that the current going through here at that moment will increase to a certain initial value. We have 20 volts divided by 1 ohm, so we have 20 amps of current going through this resistor, and the current is not going to continue through this resistor because this offers opposition to the current, and this pad does not offer resistance to the current because it's a capacitor that has no charge on it. So essentially, it's a short circuit at time equals zero. So current will initially flow here before current is forced through the second capacitor. So at that very moment, all of the current will flow to this capacitor. So we can say that the initial current at this moment would be 20 amps divided by one half. So it's equal to 40 amps per second or 40 volts per second, I should say, 40 volts per second. There we go. And so that means that when we set this equal to zero, dv1 dt, that will be when time equals zero, that's equal to 40, which is equal to when these get uh, set equal to zero, this becomes one, that becomes one, so this must equal minus a and then a minus 6b. So there's our second equation that relates a and b, in this case, to a positive 40. So when we take these two equations and solve them simultaneously, I can then write minus 20 is equal to a plus b. When we add those two together, the a's drop out. I have 20 is equal to minus 6 plus b, that would be minus 5b. Or we can say from here that b is equal to 20 divided by minus 5, which is minus 4. And then we can come back up here, and we can say that if b is equal to minus 4, and I'm really running out of room, so let me give myself a little box here. So we have minus 20 equals a plus b, but b is a negative 4, so plus a negative 4. The negative 4 goes across here. That means that we have minus 16 equals a. And there we go. We now have a result for both, neg for both a and b which means we can plug that into our original equation. We can now say that the voltage one as a function of time is equal to A, which is a negative 16, negative 16, e to the minus t, and B, which is a negative 4, minus 4, times e to the minus 60, and we had a steady state voltage 
of 20 volts. And here we finally got our first equation, V1, as a function of time. Remember, the ultimate goal is to find the output voltage as a function of time, which we know is going to be the difference between the two voltages. We now already have V1. We now need to figure out what V2 is equal to. Once we know what V2 is equal to, we can take the difference between the two and we have the solution we're looking for. So obviously, I'm out of board space, so we'll do that on our next video.